everyone. Uh, this is Peter again, and uh, giving thanks to those people who really kept our sanity, especially as ukulele players, throughout the pandemic. And we have an aptly named group to introduce you to tonight. They are called the Pandemic Pluckers. Give us a wave. Yay! Everybody's muted because we're on Zoom. <laughs> but I'm going to bring in, first of all, uh, my mate Dave, and he's going to give us a little background to the actual group. So, Dave, how are you, mate? I'm fine, thank you, Peter. Thank you for having us on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the background to the group was uh, obviously back at the start of, I think, March 2020, um, when the pandemic hit us and everyone was in lockdown. Uh, we were looking for ways of just playing the ukulele and, and joining in. I was trying to kind of look for high-tech ways to get my, my band all together. Um, I looked at various bits of software, um, like Jitsu and Jamulus and Google Meetup and all this, but didn't didn't really work very well. Uh, and then I spotted on one of the forums, uh, the Ukulele Wednesdays were doing stuff. I think it was Instagram, actually. Uh, they were doing stuff, so I kind of uh, messaged them. Lorraine Bow uh, got back to me. She runs the Ukulele Wednesdays there in London. Um, and said, yep, yeah, we're going to do this, this and this, come along and invite us, invited me along to to Zoom, uh, and then it kind of uh, started from there, really. Right. And, uh, and but... currently, I've I checked it before, and I reckon we've done six hundred and ninety-one days. You are kidding! And we've had we've had ninety-one days. We've had a couple of days off for good behaviour. I think we <laughs> we've had technical we've had technical issues, um, but generally, yeah, it's it's been running. Someone has been hosting it for six six hundred and ninety-one days. Unbelievable! <sighs> Unbelievable, thing. mate. Tell you so uh, delighted to have you mate but also uh three others of your friends and yeah. uh so i'm gonna bring in let me see uh we've also got jenny i believe hiya jenny hi pete how are you i'm very good so tell me about your experience with being part of the pandemic pluckers okay well i started playing ukulele um i guess it must be three or four years ago but um that was within my class at school because we have a visiting ukulele teacher who comes in and i started learning basic chords and then my husband and i went along to our local uh, ukulele group uh, but due to covid that obviously shut down and um I was having to shield during lockdown because of um, I've got an immune disease and so I guess for the first eight weeks I wasn't able to go out at all and it was very difficult as well because my dad had died mm -hmm. uh, due to Covid so uh, everything obviously had shut down. Um, my cousin then found out about pen pandemic pluckers and introduced me to the group and I went on a few times early on and it was quite nice to be able to see her face and chat to her um, in sort of not outside of the sort of family situation on a, a kind of a hobby that we both had uh, but at the same time obviously I was going through a lot of grief it was quite tricky and so I didn't attend that frequently mm. Um, but then as things settled down, I probably started properly sort of May or June time. Mm. And I was just the skill of everybody. And I remember hearing Ronan play, I think it was a Saturday night. And I was like, I, well, I, I was like, I want to be like that. No, I'll never be as skilled as Ronan. <laughs> Never, ever. But I just thought, I'm really enjoying this. And I'd always enjoyed ukulele at school as well, learning along with the children. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I then started attending most most nights during lockdown and uh, started having lessons as well with Ronan. And I've just really enjoyed it. It's brought so much, so many friendships because we've spent so much time online together. Mm -hmm. And we've a lot of us met in real life now as well and had real life jams. That's and that's it's been amazing to sort of expand your social circle and to develop a skill at the same time. So I'll be forever grateful to Lorraine for starting this off and also mm -hmm. to the hosts such as Neil and Ronan and Dave and the others, mm -hmm. the main ones who've just kept it going throughout. Right. Now, sadly, we haven't got Lorraine with us tonight, but uh, what's Lorraine's full name, just so we can give her a mention? Lorraine Bow. 
Lorraine Bow. Okay, so if you're watching this, Lorraine, we haven't forgotten about you. We just couldn't get you in. So <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't get any more faces on my screen. So that's, that's my excuse. <laughs> uh, Jen, thanks very much for that. I really appreciate it. I think uh, from what you've said, um, the pandemic pluckers has been like a, a lifeline to you. Would that be fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cool. Wonderful. So Jen mentioned uh, about Ronan, and uh, we're fortunate to have him along tonight. So introducing Ronan. How's it going? Good, good. So what I want to do is ask you from your perspective about the uh, pandemic pluckers. How on earth did you get involved with it all? Um, like like Dave and like um, Jenny kind of found out about it through the through. I think it was the Ireland ukulele jam mm -hmm. thing. Lorraine had put a um, Lorraine had put up a little announcement saying that um, she was planning on having seven nights of jams to keep everybody sane, mm -hmm. and um, I signed up immediately because I, I when March happened, everybody who like I, I work as a musician myself, and everybody in my field pretty much were told, yeah, you're you're on holiday for the foreseeable future. Mm. And um, as you probably know yourself, if you're used to constantly doing something and then suddenly not, you, your fingers start to itch. You need to you need to play. Mm -hmm. um, you, you need to make some noises. You need to annoy your neighbors. And this <laughs> seemed like the perfect opportunity. Um, and it, it meant that I could annoy people on an international scale. Um, Fantastic! What a pla <laughs> what a platform! <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, when Lorraine put the announcement up, it was it was kind of hard to stop myself from going. Yep, reporting for duty here. Anyway, Excellent. I can help out. I'd, lo I'd love to be there. Excellent. And um, like like Jenny and Dave um, implied and said, it became it. it as the lockdown went on, as COVID kept going, it, it became something more than just jamming, just playing a few tunes with a few strangers online. The strangers became friends. They became kind of a pandemic family mm -hmm. uh, support group. Mm -hmm. um, and each night's jam became kind of a therapy. It became something good for good for your soul. Because you got to you got to laugh and joke around and play a few tunes and get that social injection, that much needed social injection that just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and then now now that restrictions are lifting, uh, I, a lot more in the UK than in Ireland at the moment, but um, they're getting there over here. Um, it it meeting folks in real life just kind of added a whole new element to it, like. Sure. Um, sure. Although the surprising thing was how easy going it was that mm -hmm. um, you, 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 you hear stories about meeting mad people online uh, and meeting them in real life. And, you know, you, you hear the horror stories, you're like, oh, God, then you meet the pandemic pluckers in person. And the most surprising thing is discovering that they've got shins. Um, yeah. You know, that something exists below the bottom of the square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing shorts right now, but you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, friend, you know what? A friend of mine had a. He works in an office, and they had for a charity. You know the way they have like a casual, casual day, and everyone brings in a donation and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They said they had a thing where everyone got to. Everyone was asked to wear what they wore to Zoom meetings. <laughs> so there was a lot of suits on top, pajamas on the bottom, uh, coming into work that day. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely brilliant yeah. well listen mate thanks very much for uh, you know giving us your time and, and just having it from your perspective mm. i'd like to go uh, now to um uh, the last person in the interview is uh but but no means least is uh, our friend neil and uh, neil uh, so what we're going to do i'm going to just ask you your part uh within the pandemic pluckers if that's all right yeah sure um, so basically, I'm one of the hosts. We we have a we have different hosts every night of the week. Um, some of them are weekly. Some of them sort of cycle around fortnightly. Uh, I'm Lorraine and myself sort of split Wednesdays to for the ukulele Wednesdays. Lorraine actually taught me how to play with her um, learn to uke uh, set up in London, which is still going even through the pandemic. 
Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been a marvelous thing. I, I was there on the first night when we were trying out all sorts of different software. Um, and yeah, I've sort of been there on and off ever since. Um, certainly hosting hosting on a Wednesday is a regular thing. Mm-hmm. In fact, if it, if it doesn't mess anything up that you're doing, I'm actually going hopping straight on to host tonight as well. So uh, with the <laughs> usual Wednesday's crew. But what's been the amazing thing is, is bringing together people from all over the world. Um, I mean, we, we have people there. I mean, regularly, I would say the jam is is made up of half half the people. Half the people are from overseas. I mean, obviously, Ronan uh, is from Ireland, which isn't too far away. We got people from sort of Melbourne, uh, Australia, South Australia as well. Um, got a big community in Canada. There's three or four people that log on there, um, and, and all across the US, Boston, California, Denver, Florida, just just. Uh, yeah, loads of people. Montana, some some really far far flung, flung places. Yeah, um, okay. Boston. Yeah, it's, it's it's been amazing meeting people from from everywhere. And uh, one of the hosts is also from Germany, Uber from Germany, who's who's uh yeah a, a massive part of the uh, the setup as well. Mm. And, and it's fantastic. I mean, it it, it, it really is. It's um uh, when when the guys from Australia comes on, this guy called Dave Munro who's on most who, who pops in most days. It's actually seven o'clock in the morning there. It's a different day. Yeah, <laughs> we're not only plucking, we're time traveling. <laughs> so, did you ever do like uh, one marathon one? Um, well, Ronan got into the habit of doing quite a few marathon ones. Oh, okay. Um, every 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 Saturday. Um, initially, initially, um, when we first started, uh, it was we're going to be on for a couple of hours between eight and ten. We'll sing some songs and it finished. And as as the months went on and everyone got friendly with each other and, you know, everyone was finding comfort in, you know, breaking the loneliness everywhere. It, uh, we, we finished later and later and later, especially Ronan, um, who, who took it upon himself to finish at like midnight and then at one o'clock and then at two o'clock and, <laughs> and, and take it on. Um, so we used to come on, used to come on the Saturday morning and say, right, we've done, we've beat last week's record. We've been on for seven hours. Uh, and whilst I was sitting there dreaming of ukuleles, um, they they were all concocting a plan to do a twenty four hour marathon. So in the September of twenty twenty, um, they decided we're going to do a marathon, and uh, also to start off the marathon twenty four hours, they did, they did a musical. So Danny works in the theatre, and she um, she wrote all the little introductions to songs, and it, so it was made of the musical. Everyone got dressed up. Uh, as some sort of murderer or whatever and um we went we did the the musical which took about three or four hours and then uh ronan took over the hosting for a bit and then we literally just stayed on for 24 hours and went right went right round the world so the american guys picked it up uh you know denver doug and and people whilst we was whilst i was sleeping ronan ronan and quite a few of the others stayed up for 24 hours but um and then we just kind of continued up to a very emotional um, finale, I think, which was um, Hey Jude, wasn't it? So, um, but we they, 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 we did a charity fundraiser on Facebook for the uh, Doctors Without Borders, um, mm-hmm. and on that on that evening we raised three thousand six hundred and seventy five pounds. Wow. Which which is amazing. And because that was so because it worked out so well, everyone was like, when's the next one? <laughs> so then we did one for Christmas, which, which didn't go over twenty four hours, but another Christmas uh, murder the musical. Then we did a Valentine's murder the musical. And then this summer just gone, uh we did a midsummer murder mm-hmm. murder the musical. So in total we raised um six thousand nine hundred pounds. Wow. Or eight thousand two hundred euros. <laughs> or yeah, for your American viewers, nine thousand two hundred um, dollars. Uh, and if anyone's in Albania, just under a million Albanian left. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sounds better if you if you do it. it, does, in, it? Yeah. We've, we've raised nearly a million for charity. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's in Albanian left. Listen, I'm sure that everybody who's been watching has had a load of fun in your company. I know you've got a, a live stream to do tonight, so I'm not going to keep you all. But thank you very much for doing this. Uh, it's been a real honour for me to to do it. So thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Peter. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Oh,
right, make it better.